Okay, so in this um, video, we're going to discuss data structures and data types in R. Now, basically in R, you will be dealing with data. So it is important that you know how to um, go around the various data types and the structures so that when you have data, you can store it in a way that when you have to do some computations on it, it will be easier and, and then it will not result in errors and so forth. So that's the focus of, of this session. Now, so when we talk about data structures in our There are basically five types. Now, depending on the book that you are using, it may be six. Okay, and the reason is simple. In some books, they classify factors as a data structure. But here, um, and in some other books, that, um, we will classify a, a factor as a data type. And the reason is simple because um, the, a factor is just like a vector. Okay, so um, just that it's under, you can have it under either a nominal scale or an ordinal scale of measurement. Okay. So the first data structure we talk about is called a vector. Vectors. Vectors. Now, so a vector in R is just a one dimensional array, right? So basically, an ordered collection of objects. of the same type, right? So for example, if I talk about age as a vector, I collect data on age, then I'm going to get numeric, right? Because they, they are going to give me numbers. I ask you, what is your age? Maybe 23, 25, or 40, or 60, and so forth. So it, it it's, a collection, okay, of um, objects of the same type. Now, if I ask you of your religion, you're going to say maybe a Christian, a Muslim, and, and so forth. Okay. Of course, we can quote Christian and so forth as one, maybe Muslim as two, and the other religions three, and then maybe four for others, right? But such uh, values are actually representative of, a, of of a specific group. Group. Okay. So now let's see some vectors, right? So C maybe 23, 24. The next person is maybe 80, 36, and maybe a pensioner, 67. Okay. So here. What I need to do to I have written this uh, this uh, vector, but I have not run it. So you see, my environment is empty on my console too. I don't have anything over there. So what do I do? I run this, and age shows here. It says that age is what numeric, and it is made up of what five uh, values. Now, I can also define religion and religion, I may have a Christian, a Christian, a Muslim, um, a Muslim, 
the traditional ways. Let me end that dot. Hindi. Or maybe another question. We, we have five now, okay. So I do it like this. So you see, this is also a vector, but that vector is made up of a data type character. So you see the structure is the vector, but it has, it is, it constitutes the type, that type you have in that. Um, structure is a character and this one is also numeric. Okay. Now I can also have another one, which is a, let's say, a, Logical, so I ask whether we'll vote. So let's assume that we ask whether you vote in the next election. And then somebody said, true, I'll vote. This one says, I'm not going to vote, false. And the next person may be false. The next person, true. And the next person will be false. Now, if I run this, that's also a vector, but it is made up of what? Logical data types. Okay. So R uh, uh, has these data types. We can have dates missing values and so forth but for now we will make do with this because we will come back to data types later on okay now so what we have realized is that two is that for functions sorry for vectors so use what we have we use what use the C, we call it the combined function to create a vector. But there are other ways that we can also create vectors. Um, to, and this one, it, it's about how to create what? Patent vectors. Okay, well, what we did up there, you can it, 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 it may not follow any pattern, but here we want to use pattern vectors. And then I, we can use the column. So the column is to create a pattern vector where we have sequence of numbers and the differences are only one. So sequence of numbers with the difference of one. So consecutive differences. One. So example is that I can do one to hundred, one to let's say ten. If I run this, it gives me one, two, three up to ten. So that's a vector. I can I can assign it a name like int, and there it's this is an integer vector and it is so because I you know, generated this and we say one to ten instead of one. So it takes this as a whole number, an integer number, right? Okay. And two we can also um, create numbers from what let's say negative twenty two to five. We can do so, right? So there is also integer. Okay. It, it will start from negative 20 right down to what to five. So that's it. We can also move in terms of um, like descending order, like we have done. So I. I the next one is sequence. Remember, it's not every time that you um, move in steps of one. 
So here is a general sequence. So when general sequence. So here we can do it in any form, either in steps of fractions, what have you, or multiples, whatever you can, you can use. So first of all, if you don't know anything about this, what you do is to do the help out. Okay. We say sequence generation. So this generates sequence of observations, and this is how this is done, right? It's like this. So I copy and paste, and then I'll explain what each of these things are. So you move from one to the other. Okay, so one to like 10. Okay, remember the previous one, we move in steps of one. So if I were to do this, I'll say by one. Okay, so I'm going to run this. You see, it's one to 10. Okay, if it is, let's say, 20, 10, it will move in descending order. Um, uh, yeah, so you you can't use ascending order in this way. We must reverse it. We can do so, but we can use reverse to reverse it. Yeah. So here, let's say if we were to move to this, it's like this. Okay. Like that. Okay. We can also move in steps of let's say um, point one, okay, or maybe point um, five. So here you see you move 20, 20.5, 20 20.1. So by can be anything. Okay. Can be anything. But you see, it must be on a positive number. So when you come here, you see all from to the starting, okay, and maxima end. So that's why when we we do it. Like from the bigger value to the smaller value, it doesn't work because I have programming that your from should be what a smaller value to the mass number. And the by is what the increment of the sequence. The length out is the desired length of the sequence. So I'll explain what this is. If I want to, let's say, get a um, 60 observation between 20 and 50, right? All I need to do is that I don't have to now search for what differences by or by will give me that uh, 50 observations. All I need to do is to say length out, length dot out. Okay. So length dot out is 50. Okay. So I will just divide and post in this. And give me those. Right. So that's, that's the sequence, and that can also be used to create a vector. Now, then the last one is replicate. So, re okay. so here um, is just replicate numbers, right? Replicate elements. Okay. Now, so what do we do here? Let's look at some examples. Yeah. Okay, so let me go to the help files so you know how this is like. So it replicates elements of vectors or list. All right, we'll talk about list soon so you know what this is. So times, length out, and there's even each. So let's look at some more examples. So replicate, let's say nine four times, it means I'll get one, two, three, up to four. No, nine, 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 four times, okay. So this is the same as times, okay, if I should replicate into your time. So that does it, okay. Um, and then also, I can take some vector, right, and, um, Repeat it, so four, let's say three times. Okay, so you see here, 
it takes one, two, three, four, and then repeats it, and so forth. But I can also say each. Okay, so I can also say each, and then here it will repeat each number three times. But consecutive. So note the difference between the. So R makes life easier if you have to do some repetitive things. You don't need to, um, you know, be writing all the way. So one to ten thousand, then you start one to three to. You can just say one is to ten thousand. That has to. Be. So that's it about uh, how to create vectors. Now the next thing that we look at is how to reference elements of a vector. In other ways, we can also do a substrate that is retrieving. How do we retrieve elements in a in a, in a vector? Okay. So, Let's say that is 1.1. Referencing. Okay. So here we use. Uh, the two ways, okay, one, A, we can use this, so the square bracket. Now, how do you use it? You need the name of vector, okay, then the square bracket, then I, where I is the position, the position of the observation. So, example, let's look at age. Okay, so if we want the third person's age, we do this. So 18. If we want all other ages except the per said third person, we will do minus, and then we get that. Now, if we want more than one, we can input it in as a vector. So let's say we want one and the fourth. Like that. If I negate that one, it will take display all ages except one and four. So that's that's about saturating with the with the and here we can also be using names. Using names, okay. Now, uh, here, we will still use a square bracket. So use a square bracket. However, what we will put in is not the numbers, but rather the names. So to do that, we are going to name our vectors before, right? So names, so how to name, so we are taking the opportunity to name vectors. Okay. So the vector should be character. So character, and now we put them in quotation mark. Okay, so Ali, the next person may be Abba, the next person may be Sai. So these are the five people. Okay. So now, if I want the age of the third person, the third person, I know the third person's age, the name, it is Sai. So I put Sai in here, and it retrieves the age of Sai. Okay. But the spelling must be right. And so if I want more than one, I must put it as a vector now, right? So sorry, and maybe I'll be. There. So that's that's how you can substrate 
or reference or element in the elevator. Now there are some useful functions. So useful vector functions. Uh, I can name this as 1.2. Okay. So vector function. For example, we can use which. So this is a query. So I can say that which age is greater than 25. In other words, who are the people greater than 25? So here it will give us just the image logical expression because look over here I'm going to get true or false then if I do this if you are greater than that okay so it is just finding out which of these um, people are over 25 years and it is the those amount and whatever um Abby, but they are in one position fourth and fifth so that's how which will query will query um, a, a data set. If I want to get the exact ages of those people, then I must put this one in a square bracket so that when it is done, uh, it will extract those that will say true. Okay, so that's that's uh, one way, which is which um, which function. There are a couple of them. We can also get which dot min, which dot min. So in other words, which one is minimum? Then if we have which dot min, then definitely we should have what? which dot max. Which dot max, okay. So here, if you query a vector with this, what it is going to do is to find the position of the minimum value. So which dot um, main age, all right, will be that the third person is the youngest one, which is 18. It means, and then I can also do which dot max. And then by okay. So these are some of the um, observations. Remember, if you want to retrieve the exact age, you must pass it through the age process, which will give the, uh, the position that you see. There are other functions, several of them to do addition multiplication to find the minimum maximum and uh, minimum maximum uh, and so forth i'll show you some and yeah so you should uh, look at this yeah so some will give us x prod will give us the product the cum sum will give us of the cumulative sum, like a frequent uh, cumulative distribution, uh, sorry, cumulative frequency function. Men will give us minimum, max will give us maximum, mean, median, variance of S, covariance, standard deviation, range, like a quantile, five nine, and so forth. Um, Five num will give us the two case, five numbers and summary, minimum, maximum, and, and so forth. And the unique will give us what the unique uh, um, observation. Okay. Um, Yeah, so about um, vectors, now we move on to two, which is uh, 
matrices. So matrices, as we know in mathematics, matrices are about, they are two dimensional arrays. Okay, it has rows and what, columns, right? And um, so 2.1 creating matrices. Creating matrices. Now, there are three ways so that you can create a matrix. Okay, so first of all, using matrix. Okay. okay, so how do we do this? Well, let's assume that I want to create a matrix between of the objects 1, 2, 3, up to 20. I want a 4 by 5. A four by five matrix, four rows, five um, columns. So what do I do? I may say I have my data. My data is one to twenty. This should be column one to twenty, right? Then let's say I call it mat one as a name. So I call a matrix. Function. Okay, it says it needs a data. It needs data. Of course, we can we can um, do this. Okay, um, help out. And then when you come here, you can copy and fill in. That's that's the easiest thing to do. Because I have been doing this. For years, it's easy because I mean I know whatever I'm looking. But for the beginners, it's not so easy. So the easiest way is that you copy these dim names. We can clear it because um, I prefer that we name it after we have created it. It makes life easier. So my data is the 1 to 20. Then my number of rows is 4. Number of columns, I can leave it, okay, because I know the total number of observations. And then I know the number of rows. So automatically, I know the number of columns. Right? For the sake of argument, let's just maintain it. So, Okay, then by row is false. Now this is a logical argument, which is false or true. By default, it is false. Now, if by row is false, it means fill this column once. If by row is true, then fill the rows. Once the row gets through, you move to the next column. And so that, that's, that's it. That's it. That's, 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 that's how it is. So we'll create the two and then you see the difference. Okay. I'm sorry, I have not done this. So then, so you see, because this one by row is false, it fills it what? Column wise. So it fills the first column. When the first column is done, it moves towards the second column. And then um, the third, and then the fourth. Now, let's see. The next one is that we're going to create matrix two, but that one we are going to make this to be true. Like this. Okay. And then there. Okay. So if you, because the by row is true, you see it fills it this way. And after that, it goes that way. So it is important that you notice how this is done. Other than that, when you have a data set, you end up giving somebody's age to
to the height of someone and so forth. It will mess your data up completely. So it's important that you take note of this as we move on. So that's, that's one way of creating this. Then the other two, we put them together. So I'll say B is that we use C vine. Okay. And then R vine. And we'll see the difference between the two. So C bind is just column bind. It means you are adding columns together so that, yeah, or if it is R bind, it means you are adding rows. In other ways, you are piling up by some rows together. Okay. So how do we do this? To do this, we are going to create some more uh, vectors. So let's look at weight. Okay. So weight, um, I can select weight, but just to have a feel of statistics, let's sample. We can sample the weight, okay, from let's say 60 kg to 140 kg, right? So sample is, is, is used to randomly sample observations observation so it looks like this so random sample sample so this is how it looks like okay so i can copy this and then maybe we fill it in okay so x is what you want to sample now so here what we want to sample is that we want data from 60 to 140 kg all right then the size is the sample size. How many do you want? So in this case, we want five. Then this one replace. If replace is false, it means, you know, once you take the number, you cannot replace it or to the next one. So it's just like when you are, let's say the Saturday Lotto that they do, they take five numbers. When the number comes out, you don't bring it back again. So that's replace is false. And for those sampling with replacement, it will be replaced so true. Okay, so we this one we just notice that we leave the default like that. Prop is also that we can assign probabilities to each data point, right? So let's say you go to a classroom and this classroom is made up of 80 students. 50 of them are 20 years, right? Okay, maybe 20 are 90 years. Okay, 24 age people and, and so forth. So if, if you realize that um, a 20 they are old because they are 30, so you can assign that probability. Right? You can assign that probability um, of 30, that will be 30 over 80 to the number 20. And then the rest you do it like that. So but yeah, but we may get there. So this is just uh, something to put our appetite. So if we look at what we've gotten, it's all 105. So if I do it again, I'm going to get different results because this is random sample. So each time you get different results, right? And so forth. So if I want all of you to get the same results, what I'm going to do is to set the seed. Okay, so you provide it with a seed. The seed is any. Um, um, uh, whole number, right? Positive whole number. So one, two, three. Let's say we took one, two, three. Then we do this. So this one, when we, we got this, okay. So I may repeat. I may repeat it. Anytime I repeat it, I'll get the same um, observation. Okay. You can also try at your end, then you'll get the same uh, results. Okay. Now, yeah, so now we have our weight. Um, let's say we want uh, weight, let's add height, right? Um, then height, there too, we can also sample observations from a, a, a distribution. So let's take a uniform distribution. When we say uniform distribution in statistics, it means you have an interval. Let's say you say that, okay, maybe in a class, or you go to a particular uh, uh, meeting, and then you say this meeting for adults. So um, the ages are 
from 18 to let's say 60. Not no one is a, a, a painter. If it is distributed uniformly, it's not bad. So you don't have so many people. Um, yeah, around 60, and only a few are maybe below that. What you are saying is that everybody has an equal chance of, the, of being selected, something like that. Okay. So we can use an expression called R unit and look at it. It says you need N, N is a sample size, minimum value and maximum value. So that's what I'm going to use. I will say N is equal to five. In this case, we have five, a minimum value. Um, this is height. So let's say 1.60. 1.60 meters and then maximum let's take let's say 2.3 okay 2.3 then we run this we check the height and it, it has a three uh, six decimal places i can round this one okay so we can also round it round the whole thing to um, two decimal places so you you say digits, round it. How many digits? You say two. Okay. So if we rerun this and we, we do it like this, you see the six C doesn't take place. If I want to get the other one, I have to run it again. All right. So now if we run it, we get what 180 and so forth. Uh, so now we have three vectors. Let's see how we'll use C bind to, to get our matrix. Okay. So mat three. Mat three is a C bind. Mat three is C bind. So we we'll have H. We we'll have weight. Remember they are all the same in terms of their length. How many observations are in there? Right. Other than that, we get. Yeah. So, my three. My three is like that. Then let's look at the case where we use our line. That we saw here, you realize that it, it, it combined the, uh, uh, in a column wise. So here, we're going to have what row wise, right? Oh, okay, so let me, I have to redo this again. Okay, math one and math, math three, like that. And then math four, like that, okay. Now, you see the difference between the R bind and the C bind. What you should know is that in, in statistics, we organize data like this, in other ways, the columns are always the variables, and then the rows are always what the, the observations. So when you take Ali, Ali is 23 years, um, weight is 90 kg, and height is what 180. Uh, 1.8 or 180 centimeters. So this is not a good way of representing the data. All right, it's not good. Okay, you, you turn it upside down. And remember that um, we we've um, yeah we can now look at how do we retrieve observations from. So we've seen the two basically three ways of having uh, a matrix. Okay. The next thing we do is that if we're able to construct a matrix, how do we name the columns and the rows, right? Okay, um, well, this one we've named them already, but we would have used what call names, okay? So a, my three is like this, right? If I want to rename my three, okay, I would have done this, right? And then I provided it with three names, Okay, so maybe I can just add one one to this, just so you know that you can use this too.
uh, this is done. Um, let's see. Okay, so now if I call my three, you see it has changed and so forth. Similarly, if we want to uh, rows and columns, if we want to name the rows, we would have done so by saying what row names, row names map three. But remember, this one, if we can use it to do assignment, we can also use it to call the names. So if I do this, it gives me all the what, the, the names of the of the rows. Now, let's move on to how we can reference observations in the matrix. Um, nothing more than what we know before. The only addition is that here, reference elements in the matrix, in the matrix. Okay, the only difference is that here, we have rows and columns, so you have to provide positions for the rows and columns. Okay, so A or I, um, you use this. Okay. So name of matrix, name of matrix, and then the positions of the rows and columns. Okay. I am J. Uh, the row and row and column column numbers. So, for example, in my three, let's assume that in my three we want to. Um, in my three, we want to um, obtain the weight of what side, right? Then what we are going to do is simply this. We can call my three, my three, then side is a third person, right? So row three and then column two. Okay, so if you come here, size, weight is of one thing. Now, we can also get some more, let's say one, two, three, it means we want to obtain the results. Uh, how many, okay, yeah, we want to obtain all the information for size, there it is. Now, another way to do this is that we could uh, just left it blank, That. Okay. Similarly, if we want the entire, let's say, um, columns, sorry, um, row, row values, what do you do? Let's say I want three, all the weights, I do this, all the heights, I do like that. Okay, so that's, that's how we can um, extract observations from this we can also use the names right and the names so I I okay we can use the names and um, the, this one okay so the same thing we did over here I could have said my three three or side so I'll say five, side, and then I leave the other blank. So I got the same thing, right? Okay. So if I want side, and let's say the weight and um, 
let's see the first two uh, the first two this thing I can also do so by calling for the weight one and what no age one and weight one so age one and then weight one So if I do this, I get I get that one. I can combine Psi and let's say Ali. Psi and Ali. In that case, I have to also put them in what a C function. And, and then you can get it like that. So uh, perfect in this case is um, difficult to just like what we do. Previously, okay. Uh, then also um, remember that we can do several functions can be used on on a matrix like transpose and and so forth. I'll show you some of them. Um, some of the functions that can be used in, 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 um, like this, right? So we can do matrix multiplication and so forth. Okay, whatever you do in mathematics, you can also use R to do so. But this one, T is transpose of a matrix, so T is a key word, so you know, Name your object or your any object as T because it's a key way, small letter, and the, the, the cap is for what? True, so that's also the same. That is the determinant of, um, so a determinant, right, of, of A. Then solve A and B, A comma B, what? A solve system of equations. So when we have a system of equation, A is equal to B. So if you can write your equations in that form, then you can quickly use how to solve it. Provided we have inverse. Okay. Um, then if you there's a single solve A, we'll just use or we'll find the inverse of that matrix. Then the generalized inverse two is in the um, mass package, so you can get it as G. A. We can get obtain eigenvalues, Cholosky, factorization, or decomposition. We can diagonalize the matrix and so forth. Okay. Find lower and upper triangles, quite easy. Okay. All right. So that, that's it, and you should. Look at some of these uh, functions. Then the next thing is apply. Now, apply, and, and we've seen our bind and, and so forth. Okay, so um, Jim will give us the dimension, number of rows, and row will give us number of rows, number of columns, call names, row names we've seen. Name names are just. Uh, the, yeah, both row, uh, rows and column names, right? Okay, but this is dimension of A, okay? And so forth. So I'll briefly talk about apply, but it's, uh, it's also a video on apply function because they are very, very, very handy in, in, in um, treating or uh, doing computations in, in a coming handy. So for example, uh, math three, okay, they apply funny, okay, so some functions, some useful functions. And useful metric functions. 
Okay, so for them, but we are just taking apply. So apply is actually a family of um, of um, functions. So we have apply s, apply t, apply l, apply and so forth. Depending on the data structure, we select what what it is. But the basic form is apply. So its form is like this. Okay. When you use it, it's like this. So I can I can say that my three, okay, my three, the margin, if margin one is for rows, okay. So if you put in one, then it means you say whatever you are going to do should be row wise, right? It should be done to each row. If it is two, then it means for each column. So for now, I choose two, and then my function is that I want summary. Okay, the rest I can take it off and use the default. So what do I mean by summary? I want summary statistics, right? So I do it like that. So you see, age, the minimum age is what? 18, the first quarter is what? 23, median, um, Median, mean, third quarter, maximum, so forth. So that, that's, that's how they supply it. If I were to use one, it is going to calculate that for each row. But remember the rules, it means you are going to find the totals and whatever minimum for age, weight, and they are different uh, units and so forth. So it's not advisable. To be doing this, but for the sake of this, like this. So you see that the minimum will be only the height because those ones they are in meters, and then and so for the weight will be on the height. As I said, there will be more um, videos on 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 that one. But the key thing is that it, this you can use it to construct as a contingency table. And, and, and what? Um, um, the next um, thing I'll talk about is um, is data frames. Okay, data frames. So that's the third thing. Third, the data frame. And this will be very brief because we've done almost all the things. Just some comments on, on that. Okay. Now, um, to introduce data frames, I want us to consider this. Remember, we, the matrix is what? Um, a two dimensional array uh, collection of all the same data type. In other words, I cannot find, put logicals and what have you. We've seen some data that integer and characters and so forth together, right? So um, to be able to, to cook, uh, have a work around it, we do this. Um, so first of all, let's just make the mistakes and, and notice how this is live and then we change it. So remember my three, I can add religion, right? So that I attach religion to it. Let's see how the results will look like. You see, it has changed my three. My three were able to com compute uh, summary statistics and so forth. But now, it, all the values are character. So even though A is showing 23, that 23 is what? It's, it's, it's a character because that's it's a quotation mark. So now I cannot do any computations on it at all. In statistics, this will be under what? The nominal scale of measurement. Okay, so to get a work around this, we use a data frame. So the data frame is the same as a matrix. The only difference is that it can contain different data types. Okay, so to construct a data type, um, a matrix, sorry, um, data frame, we use the um, data dot frame, right? So um, you say data dot frame, okay, data dot frame, right? And I'm going to pass the same thing to it. Okay, so you see that as I did, this one will, it will just maintain it with you. So consider the two.
you check the two, they are different. In the data frame, age is numeric, okay, weight is numeric, height is numeric, but religion is all is, is a character. And so forth. So if we do it, we can even see it at the environment. Uh, whereas this one, math five, will be character. So we see that DF math. Look at DF math. It says so age, numeric. You see, this are for, it, we, um, only religion is character. But math five, they are all characters. If you look over here. Even though you see it, that way it says so character. So that's it. Um, that's Whatever we did in terms of subscripting or referencing and um, um, apply statements and whatever, also apply toward the data frame, okay? The only thing that I want to add to this is that for the data frame, okay, if we want to assess or reference um, the variables it's easy we can we can use the um, um, the dollar sign right so df dot mat okay if i want to assess the variables i can say age so if i want age there it is okay if i want any other thing all i have to do is to put in all the the dollar sign and then I, I retrieve it. It becomes a vector now. So that's, that's it's about um, data free. Okay. And lastly, um, the last data structure we talk about is um, list. So five, the five four four. So vectors, matrices, data frames, so forth. Okay. Um, five would have been the arrays, but we will not treat arrays, even list. Okay. So a list is the most complex data structure in R. So a list is basically a vector, which means a collection of, of objects, right? One dimensional object. Um, the, Added advantage of list is that it can contain any data structure, including itself. Okay, so I can define a list within a list. Okay, so um, if we create a list using using the existing list, right? Okay. Um, so I, as an example, um, we say my list. The name is my list. So list. Um, let's take a vector. So a vector could be age. Okay, um, that's character. So we can get another vector again, vector one, which is uh, the character vector. So let's say religion. So it is taking different data types. We can put in a matrix. That matrix could be what map three. Okay. Um, we can keep in a data frame. Data frame, which is what uh, um, df dot mat. Okay. If we had a list, we could have put in a list as well. Okay. So let's see how this looks like. My list. If you say so, vector, vector, matrix, data frame. So it shows you all of them. You can also display it, and then each thing that is over there. So you see, different data structures can be compiled under a list. I can create a second list, okay? My 
list two. So this second list can contain even the list we have created earlier. Okay. So I I can um, um let's there are some inbuilt data. So let me say state is state dot x77. It's a matrix. Okay. I can say that list is also equal to my list. My list. Okay. So when I do this, okay, this is also a big list. Okay. It has what? The states, which is made up of one to 50. 50 rows and eight columns. And then it is made up of a list within the list. So, so that's, that's what I mean by the fact. I mean by the, um, uh, the way that is the most complex, it can contain even its own structure. And so for any other structure. So, so, and so referencing observations, referencing objects or elements in a list, elements in a list, what do we do? So it's, it's just like a vector. So we can use a position. So my list one, my list one will give me what? The age vector, right? Okay. Um, one more thing. We can also use uh, uh, like this. Okay, so two, this. Okay, so now you don't really see, but look over here. You see here, we have the vector over here, right? Here, there's no vector. You see this if you save them. Okay. Um, let me say L1 is this, and let's look at L2, right? So let's save them. Okay, so the first one is a list. So I can check the structure of L1. Uh, to display as a list. So you see a list of one. So even though we have a vector unit, it is stored as a list. Okay. And you remember that I said struct, uh, the data structure is important. But here, it will just be a vector because it was just what, um, the name num, which is this uh, vector that has been named. So take note of that. That and the way you retrieve it. We can also um, use uh, the names, okay, to retrieve them, and also the um, the dollar sign, okay. So uh, my list, okay. If I put the dollar there, it gives me everything that is in there. So if I want a matrix, I do so, okay. If I want another. Um, let's say another one, a vector one, I do so like that. Okay, now, um, yeah, and, and, and then you can also use uh, um, the names, okay, of the vector to, to also um, retrieve it. Okay, so vector, so, so, so that, that's it about the data structures. So our next uh, topic will be on data um, 